Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Look, 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 look. We woke up before Fajr. We woke up. We woke up. This morning, I woke up today and this morning. In the morning, I woke up this morning. I woke up. गरीब बंदे माल जी तू पी रहे बंद पी रहे जितू कि बंदे पी रहे कुत्ता बिल्ला हर चीज उतू पी रही बंदे ये ऊंट के बड़े खूबसूरत बच्चे talk about zeno the sin that destroys you the sin will absolutely destroy your deen if you have not yet committed zeno and you're thinking of doing it do not do it don't compare yourself to other people that have done it thinking oh i have to fit in i have to do this because they have done it so if i don't do it i'll be left out that's what shaitan makes you think and it works to a lot of people a lot of people again it is your choice i'm not here to force you to not commit zina what i'm saying is that once you commit that zina when you commit zina your heart will feel empty the amount of people i spoke to they say the same thing i commit zina oh no i wish i never did it every single time So it is your choice if you want to commit or not. If you do, go ahead. But just remember, it will destroy you. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, "Wa man nanda an dhikri fa inna lahu naishat al anka." If you do not have the remembrance of Allah, indeed, you will be depressed. You say zina, impossible. But then you hold hands. and then you hug and then you kiss and then you kiss more and then you kiss extra more and then you touch and then the touch increases to uh, to you are at a point where zina impossible now zina this close zina is this close and yeah. then boom you commit zina and scholars yeah. is finished so that's why islam makes everything forbidden don't even touch her because it's just it's a step by step process it's a domino effect that you're doing the moment you initiate exactly. the first touch it's like springing the first domino and the whole series is exactly. going until you end up zina I was working as a teacher. It was year eight class. And a particular young man. The boy, broad shoulders. The boy, broad shoulders, strong jaw. He would walk around the playground with two girls in his hands. Year eight. Yeah, no problem. And you can see the stubble in his hip, like here. Wallahi, that that boy. He would probably beat up most of the teachers in the school. I said to some of the teachers, I said, "This is not a 13-year-old. 
And they told me off in the staff room. I remember this is like yesterday. It emerged. The embassy called, they did this and that, 22 years old. He was a 24 year old, a uh, 22 year old man from Nigeria. And he, I saw him one time having a fight and he was destroying the opponent. <laughs> Throwing him on the floor, I was like, come on man. Hey, you know that you're, you're 22 years old, this guy's 13. If you're going to Umrah anytime soon, this is how much money you need. 2024, let's go. Disclaimer, this is for people who don't want to go overboard, have money, money, but you want to have a good time, you get me? All right, guys, before we start, yeah, your Umrah company should not cost more than 1.8. 1.8, too, too much. Too much, too much, too much. Let's just assume, guys, yeah, that you have breakfast in your hotel. Should be good with around 50 to 60 real, which is about 10 to 12 pounds. And that's like dinner, a little corn shop run, lunch, whatever. Your belly's pattern. Basically. That's food done. As of for clothes, if you're low balling like us, yeah, dope should not cost more than 60. Low balling, no, yeah. it's like us. Yeah. But 90 no. real max for, yeah. for the octis, and a buyer should not cost more than 60. I'm telling you guys, I know you guys get haggled down too much, yeah. But trust me, if you come up with a little bit of confidence and a little bit of firm firmity, should be fine. Should be fine. Should be fine. Should be fine. For the little side things like books, taxis, imamas, perfumes, all that little side thing, just we're gonna add in 200 real because that's what you yeah. need. Now let's do the maths. This is the calculation, guys. Yeah, you spend 200 real on souvenirs, then you spend 1.6 on 1.5 on the Roma company, then you spend 240 to 180 real on the Thobes or the buyers, and then you spend 10 pounds a day on food. That's the calculations there, guys. At the end of the day, I'm running a holiday, so book a flight as soon as come. possible. Come and shut up. You get me? Like, you don't have to spend whatever you want to spend. This is just for people that want to know how much they want to spend. You get it, exactly. but other than that, you're good. قص ممنوع تمايل ممنوع تنكس ممنوع سناب شات ممنوع وين تذكرتك؟ ممنوع الاكل الاكل الضحك ممنوع زوجتي في البيت ان شاء الله ازع ازوج اختي اختك الله يزوجها ان شاء الله بدل حب تستهبل على امي مسوي روحك صغير الله does not give you or allow for you to get sick unless he is going to heal you. He will not allow you to go through suffering unless he's going to give you something. He will not demote you unless he's going to promote you. He will not take something from you unless he's going to give you. When a person hits rock bottom, there's only upwards. The only one who chooses to stay down is you. Keep a lot in your life and you see all the doors opening. With hardship comes relief. I want you to know something. The harder your life gets in something, know that the tougher it gets, the closer it is to relief. The tougher it gets, the closer it is to what? To relief. So don't worry. Don't worry. And rely on Allah and keep going. Did you know that this scientist quite recently in a podcast explained using science that God must exist? On the 23rd of November of this year, Andrew Huberman, one of the most famous neuroscientists in the entire world, would go on to open up about his beliefs on God. Now at the beginning of that podcast, the interviewer would go on to ask Andrew about the possibility of the brain being formed just by coincidence. How could that happen in nature? Is without a creator. Only for Andrew Huberman to start speaking about how he was mesmerized the more and more he delved deeper into the studies of the human brain. I'll just go on record, I'm very comfortable saying it. I believe in God. He began later on to start explaining how there are certain mechanisms, mechanisms like dopamine that too perfectly operate and function. Now certain things happen in the human brain that you don't see in other species. But the question is ladies and gentlemen, what does Andrew Huberman know about the human brain that you and I don't. Researchers say that the brain can store an estimated of 2.5 million gigabytes. That's equivalent to 300 years of TV shows. The brain also processes information faster than any other race and can generate 12 to 15 watts, which can generate a small light bulb. And not only that, ladies and gentlemen, but a hundred thousand chemical reactions take place in the tiny brains inside our very own heads every single second. So at last, it was not a surprise when Andrew Huberman, finally, after studying the human brain for years and years, to say something like this. When you start to study and understand brain development, as I did, you have to step back and just go, wow, wow.
Don't make this mistake in Surah An-Nas. So a lot of people never said to Surah, they say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul a'udhu bi rabbi nas, maliki nas, ilahi nas. And some may think that's correct, but obviously that's not correct. What I was doing was making the noon heavy. And noon is not one of the heavy letters. So instead of nas, I should be saying nas. So the correct way of reciting this would be, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ الَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ so there's a slight difference instead of nas, I'm saying nas. So I'm making that straight, that man is being straight and I'm not making it heavy. If you learn something new, make sure to share with someone. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not want perfection. He just wants us to try our best. Because if you wanted perfection, he already has angels for that. So it's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to fumble sometimes. But what we have to remember is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafoor rahim And if he is saying that we've overburdened ourselves, asrafu ala anfusihim, they have went to extreme with themselves, then we have to stop bashing ourselves whenever we make a mistake. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that we've sinned. He knows all the haram that we do privately, publicly, intentionally, unintentionally. But that doesn't mean you should feel unworthy when you step in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you pray to Him. When you make dua, it shouldn't feel like you're asking for too much. Because that's all waswas from shaitan. He wants us to feel unworthy so that we stop going to Allah. And that's a trick of shaitan. But when this waswas comes, we have to remember that لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Jannah is full of sinners, right? Sinners that repented. And it's those sinners that made a promise to themselves that they would never go back. And even if they did go back to that sin, they repented because jamia. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins jamia. But again, it has to be sincere. So my brothers and sisters, stop beating yourself up for small mistakes that you've made. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for accepting your dua, waiting to accept your repentance. So turn to Him and repent. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.